Hey guys, what's going on? My name's Tyler McNabb, and this is my 400EX, but today we're going to be focusing on the 450R. So, today's video, as you can probably tell by the uh, thumbnail and uh, title, is we are going to be adjusting the valves on the old 450. So, um, basically what brought this about is, uh, you know, a couple videos ago I went through and totally rebuilt the carburetor. I've been trying to dial it in. And one thing that I've noticed is when I go to start this thing, it won't start on its own unless you just barely touch the throttle. And so some, some of our thinking is, one, um, the valves may be a little bit out of spec, but also these have a decompression mechanism for when they turn over. Um, it lets them turn over easier because it decompresses the motor and if that's out of adjustment then it'll actually let too much compression out and then it won't start and so what our thinking is that maybe that's out of adjustment or the valves making it a little bit harder to start and so that's what we're going to do today plus even if that's not the case um it's just good to check the valves because we haven't done it since we bought it and uh not sure when the guy who owned it before us did it last so figure we might as well go ahead check the valves and uh yeah make sure this thing try to get it dialed in and uh, ready to go running good starting great and all that fun stuff so anyway um we'll probably jump right into the video here but um yeah let's uh let's jump right into it Okay guys, so we're gonna start with, I've got my valve shim kit here. So if you're not aware, unlike the 400EX, so the 400, I think I've I've shown uh, adjusting the valves on these before. All they have is basically a set screw and a, and a nut in place, and then you move that set screw up and down and that determines your valve spacing or your valve clearance. The 450s, however, they have valve shims. And so if you're not sure what valve shims are, they are exactly what they sound like. They are just little shims, little individual circles. Let me see if I can pull one out like this, just a little shim. And they've got writing on them. This thing won't focus on it, but uh, they're all different thicknesses. So that way you can go through and adjust your valves properly. And uh, so, you know, if your valves begin wearing to where they come further up into the head, so when the valves wear, they begin coming further up into the head, and when that happens, that gap between the um, either rocker arms or the camshaft gets smaller. And so what you would need to do is that would make your valves tighter, and so you would need to put a thinner shim in there, I believe. So uh, maybe I may have messed that up. I think that's how it works, but if it's not, um, someone will probably correct me in the comments. But that's basically how it works. And so um, that's what we want to do is we want to make sure that that gap, that clearance is what it's supposed to be. So that way the valves are opening the correct amount. And then so it's also running in a tip top shape. So I'm going to jump right into it. I'm going to time lapse taking the whole thing apart. And then I'll probably do a little bit of uh, commentary uh, talking, uh, kind of showing you how to do it. There's some really good videos out there actually how to do it. So this won't be like a full how to. Um, I know Rocky Mountain ATV MC has a full how-to on, to on how to adjust the valves on these. That's actually what I watched before I did this. Um, so I'm probably just going to time lapse getting down to it, and then I'll maybe do a little bit of commentary. So let's uh, get this thing stripped down and adjust the valves.
Okay guys, well as you can see, got the valve cover off and everything, and I went ahead and checked my valve clearances, and what do you know, uh, well 50% of them are off, so both of the exhaust valves are actually sitting pretty good. I've got my paper written up here, so my first exhaust valve was .279 millimeters, and what it's supposed to be is .28 millimeters, so that one's pretty good. And then my second exhaust valve was 0 .305. And you have uh, a, a, so the clearance is supposed to be 0 .28, and then you have a tolerance of plus or minus 0 .03, I believe. Yeah, 0 .03 millimeters. So that is within tolerance, and plus the valves will just tighten over time. So not gonna touch the exhaust valves. The intake valves, however, that's where we have a little bit of an issue. So the clearance is supposed to be 0.16 millimeters and the current clearance for this intake valve is I actually this is the smallest gauge and I couldn't even get it under so that's an issue and then the other one was at 0.063 so almost three times smaller than what it should be so we definitely got an issue with our intake valves and if for some reason the intake valve number two isn't even closing that could definitely be part of our issue um, with, you know, having to give it a little bit of gas to start it because if that intake valve isn't closing when it's turning over, then that would mean that it's letting air come out on the compression stroke. And so that would maybe cause it to not start as easy. So, um, next thing to do is I'm going to go ahead and take the cam assembly off so I can check the shims. And then I'll catch back up with you guys, and we can talk about doing the math for uh, figuring out what shims need to go in. So let's get that off there real quick, and then we can get into some math. Okay guys, well, we got everything apart. Got the cam and everything out. Uh, the cam assembly uh, holder and everything out. We have our intake buckets with the um, shims in them. And so I went ahead and I did some measuring and I've got a lot of scratch on this paper. But basically what it turned out, so like I said before, the exhaust valves are good, intakes were not good. And so when I pulled the shims off, the shim in intake valve one was, I was doing some math, but it started at 1.63 millimeters is what its thickness was. And the thickness of intake valve two was a 1.55 shim. So that's what their thickness was. So then when I go through and do the math, basically what I figured out is that for intake valve number two, I need a 1.35 shim and for intake valve one, I need a 1.5 shim. And so the way I figured that out is basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your current shim size. So for example, this one was a 1.63. I subtracted the total tolerance of what it's supposed to be, what the clearance is. So 1.63 minus 0.16 millimeters. I'll try to throw some stuff up on the screen to kind of help you follow along. So 1.63 minus 0.16, and then I will add back what my clearance was. So my clearance was 0.063, and when you do that, when you add that back in, that will give you the size that you need. The actual size that I needed was 1.5337, but I decided to go ahead and round down to a 1.5. That'll give me a little extra clearance. So then as it wears, it will uh, basically, it'll come into um, 
it's what it's supposed to be so as the valves wear that clearance will get tighter and tighter and so i'd rather have it just a little bit more on the upper end of that clearance than down below the, what it's supposed to be so hopefully that makes sense but anyway that's kind of the math behind it it's kind of just your basic addition and subtraction there's nothing too fancy about it but uh yeah that's really all there is to it i just use my calculator on my old iphone and uh it worked out pretty good so um and then one thing you do want to do so um not all um shims will have numbers on them so the hot cam kit that i have the shim kit it actually has little numbers and stuff on the shims so something else you will want is a set of calipers because for example the shims that are in this now so in the intake and in the exhaust valves as well they do not have any markings or anything like that on them. So the only way for me to get the shim size was with a pair of calipers. So you will need a pair of calipers. Um, even if they do have numbers, it's a good thing to go ahead and measure. I did that for the new ones and uh, they came out where they were supposed to be. So um, I just use a cheap set of calipers, nothing crazy. I mean, you don't need to go buy a crazy nice set of calipers, but something, you know, that's not two dollars but you know maybe spend 20 30 bucks on a decent set of calipers uh to get you dialed so now that i know what kind of intake valve shims i need only thing left to do is to put this thing back together and uh get it running so hopefully that ended up being my issue so like i said uh intake valve one which is this one or no this is intake valve two um like i said i couldn't even fit a feeler gauge in it so most likely what was happening and the reason I was having to give it gas to start it is that intake valve was hanging open just a little bit because there was no clearance between the cam and the intake valve. And so that valve was hanging open just a little bit most likely, which would, if that valve hangs open just a little bit, it'll run fine, but you'll be down on compression, which is why it won't kick over and start. So, um... I guess you're not actually down on compression. It's letting the compression out of the cylinder uh, on the power stroke. So that's what it would be. So anyway, hopefully we'll get this dialed. I'll quit rambling because it looks like I've been rambling for about four and a half minutes. And uh, yeah, we'll get this thing uh, slapped back together. So um, next time you see me, hopefully we'll be firing this thing up. So let's get into it.
Okay guys, well as you saw, the old 450 is starting pretty dang good now. So I think we've we've got her good and dialed in. The valves are within adjustment. Um, however, I think after last time after I talked to you, I was, went to put this thing back together. And unfortunately, the one intake valve that a um, feeler gauge wouldn't even go inside, I had to adjust it two different times. And so I actually, it was, it was actually like almost point three or point three five millimeters out of adjustment and so the tolerance that you're supposed to have between the cam and the valve is 0.16 millimeters so it was basically two times out of adjustment before it came back to where it was supposed to be so that intake valve was definitely hanging wide open um basically i think since we bought it since we bought it it's been hard to start and so yeah valves definitely hadn't been adjusted in a while and so it was definitely due and so now the thing starts on a dime you don't before you had to give it a little bit of throttle and now i know why because since that intake valve was hanging wide open there was probably basically no compression in the engine and so we got that fixed and uh yeah so now she starts really good we got that 24 volt system with two new batteries going great and uh so hopefully we won't have to worry about any starting issues uh in the near future so overall i think hopefully you guys enjoyed this video nothing too crazy nothing too exciting um hopefully you guys are kind of enjoying the content i haven't had a lot of great videos out lately at least i feel like i've been kind of lacking on the number and the quantity and quality of videos but unfortunately i've just been life has been really busy um with stuff i've been uh, doing some stuff uh with work and uh basically just yeah uh, i was healing up with my back so i haven't ridden in a while and uh i think i'm feeling pretty good now so hopefully from the time i'm filming this we have a week till the next race and so hopefully uh i'll, I'll get some good content from that with the racing and the vlogging and stuff so hopefully we'll get some good videos out of that and then maybe i'll put another video out after this one um before the race content we'll see uh what i'm able to get to this week but overall i think uh hopefully you guys enjoyed uh enjoy some of the 450 content as well i know my channel was kind of founded on the 400 ex but um man i love this thing i love this quad it's uh they are a lot more maintenance uh i've in the entire time i've had my 400 i've probably done more to this 450 in you know three four months than i've done to that 400 in like two years just with little stuff so these quads they are more maintenance but hey i like working on them and that kind of stuff and it just goes to show you that if you have a problem you figure out what the issue is you do a little bit of investigating and what do you know valves were out of adjustment intake valve was hanging and that was our starting issue so okay i'll quit rambling here i'm really bad about that sorry guys but uh maybe you enjoy it maybe you don't but anyway i'll wrap up this video so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video hopefully you guys are enjoying the content that i'm putting out uh, i try to make it pretty enjoyable for uh, myself and you guys so Hopefully you guys are enjoying that. So thanks for coming and watching. I really do appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next one.